is basically the top of the tank. Come up a little bit, Frank. Straight up. We're going to do this 19 more times all the way around. And then we're going to put the upper ring, which is a five-foot diameter ring, put that on top. Hey, now we can put the ring in. Look, let's put the difference. You just slide it up. This is our five-foot diameter ring. We're going to tack this into place. Just weld it. Now we only have uh, 16 more to go around. Nice one. Done. Done. On to the next project. So from the beginning, I was thinking about the sheer weight of all these cannons, you know. Definitely weighed heavy on my mind. You know, this thing's designed to bring cannons to the middle of an army. That's the whole purpose of this thing. So since the cannons are such an important aspect of this whole thing, uh, I figured I'm going to call a friend in. His name's Cap. He deals with cannons all the time. He'll be able to tell us and help us with these Da Vinci cannons. So you know we're doing this crazy Da Vinci tank mm -hmm. thing, right? Yeah. And we've got a lot of cannons to build <laughs> and think about. So um, okay. I see you brought some cannons with you. Yeah, come take a look. Sweet. These are both muzzle loaders, mm -hmm. which I think in our Da Vinci tank, you know, we're going to probably want some breech loaders. I can't imagine guys being around the outside of this thing muzzle loading these things. Da Vinci actually developed a breech loading gun. Okay, good. And, that helps us. Uh, the difference is with the muzzle loader, of course, you shove everything in the muzzle. Right. With the breech loader, it's just like the modern cannon they had today. The back end opens up, you put the round in, you close it, and you fire it. Well, good. Uh, let's get some stuff together and we'll start okay. making some cannons. All right. Okay, here's your cannon barrel. Here's your chamber. We're going to cut the cavity for the powder chamber. This is the breech loader. It'll be cut out from here to here and big enough so that we can set the powder chamber down into it and then push it into meet with a barrel. So when we're done, this will be just a big hole. Da Vinci would have been able to load guns and fire in the direction of the enemy wherever they were. With one device, Da Vinci was accomplishing the same thing that probably 500 to 1,000 men would have been able to do. When this is welded up, then uh, and we weld this end on, this gun's done. It's ready to shoot. I got something to show you. Looks like a lot of parts over here. The whole reason for that is this. I like it. So, here we have the breech. We have the holes. It's all been welded. Got it. I've got my ball. Nice. Weighs about two pounds. We will then use a thin piece of leather to wrap the ball and make a seal. Got then it. we'll have the cup with a powder. This gets set down inside, meets up, and then we have a wedge that is pushed through here. So now, when I'm going to use it, I take my igniting device, right. stick that in there, light it, boom, it goes bang. I like it. The oh. cannon looks awesome. 30 of these things going around, it's going to be pretty impressive. And I think, you know, anybody sees this thing coming, they're going to just run the other way. We've started cutting today. We've got 60 pieces to make for the bottom. And then the top, there's 60 of them, too. We'll bang out 60 of them pretty easy. came down to check on our progress. When working with Val, you gotta be, I think, more precise. When you're working with Flash, you go with it. Okay. Five, six. Flash, she's not right. Huh? The engineer's saying it's not right. right. What's your not right? Coming up, it's measured once, cut twice. So we're about an eighth of an inch mm -hmm. short on all our cuts. An eighth of an inch times 60, that comes out to about a seven or an eight inch error. And later, the ultimate test for Da Vinci's armored tank. So the important thing is that we proved that this thing's a really kick-ass war machine. When doing Da Vinci returns. What's your out right? Oh, it's a problem, buddy. Take a look. Count it over from right there. Okay, one inch. <laughs> no, you gotta go from here, though. Nope, 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 nope. Go from a precise line right there. Okay, so we'll cut it down, and it should be... It's eight good. and three quarters. And that's ten. 
the, the, it's, it's showing as nine and three quarters, yeah. but always minus an inch, because this is a precise mark versus that corner is not precise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I've definitely designed the machines, and they're designed for precision, so I'm trying to make sure that that integrity stays with the design and stays with each component as we make them. Should be 13, right? Nope. It's like 18. We have... Third, we have 12 and uh, 7 eighths. <laughs> Again. So we're about an eighth of an inch short on all our cuts. I was there with the ruler. I was there with the protractor, making sure we were at exactly 88 degrees and exactly 8 and 3 quarters of an inch. And the magnitude of the scale of what we're talking about, an eighth of an inch times 60, at the end of the day, that comes out to about a 7 or an 8 inch error. You want to measure it one more time before I cut it? So where we're at right now is we've got the upper half has all the skin on it. The other side is just about done as far as the lower tank. All the wood skin on that is almost done. We have to put one on top of the other, and we're going to all work on that together. Hey, Bill. Val, today's quote is about truth. The truth hurts. Although the partridge steals each other's eggs, nevertheless, the children from these eggs always return to their true mother. Stop your crying and get to work. <laughs> I cut some standoffs earlier. These are basically the supports for the upper turret piece, the last cap of this whole entire thing. <sighs> Look at that. Now we're cooking with gas. I'm about to weld this guy onto our standoffs and finish welding the standoffs into place. This looks a lot more like our drawing, which I'm happy about. And then this thing's good to go as far as the top side of this thing. Hey, that looks good. It's pretty close, huh? Yeah. We're pretty much getting ready to put the upper half on top of the lower half. There she goes! We're going to basically drive it right under our upper half. Just remember to duck. And trying to lower it down on 20 little pegs that we've got to, you know, get it just right. Yeah, Val's I off. think Val's got to come in a little bit. Frank and I lowered this thing down for the last time. It sat beautifully right in the right spot. On the money. On the money, yeah! So it worked out really well. They did it. I don't know how they did it. I mean, by moving forklifts, it's like moving mountains. But they lined it up perfectly, and they it looks great. Look. Got ourselves a teak. <laughs> nice. I'm really proud of it, actually. Um, I, I knew it was going to look good. I didn't know how good. I know. It's alive! It's alive! After all this hard work, we finally got this, you know, three, four-ton machine together. And it's ready to drive. You know, once we get this thing welded up, I, I want to take it out for a spin. We're just going to start sanding her down, dust her off a bit, and put the stain on. And we're going to hopefully uh, be done with this thing. You know, we're building a war machine here. But at the same time, knowing Leonardo the way I do, I'd have to say that he'd want it to look pretty, too.